Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my talk uh, for Mac DevOps, uh, Visual Studio Code for Mac Admins. My name is James Smith. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere. Uh, my username is at SmithJW. Uh, there's the link right there for where uh, all of these slides are going to be hosted. Uh, I've also got uh, a, a repo up uh, called Swift Enrollment, which is utilizing Swift Dialog for an enrollment flow, uh, makes it really super simple uh, to use uh, Swift Dialog to create an enrollment flow uh, for your device fleet. And you'll also probably hear me uh, occasionally on the Mac Admins podcast, though most of the time I sit behind the keyboard and make the show sound great. So on to what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, most of my time as a Mac admin is really spent within Visual Studio Code. As you can see, I'm even doing this presentation within Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to run you through as much as I can um, in 15 minutes, uh, just a very brief overview of some of the features that we can uh, use in the application um, and the things that I find uh, make my life a bit easier. So broadly, those things are going to be the command palette, workspaces, themes, formatting, uh, setting sync, git, and also just some extra extensions. So first up, we've got the command palette. Now this is accessed via shift command P, though with any of the keyboard shortcuts within Visual Studio Code, you can also remap to your own keybinding if you want. Really, it's easy to think about this as a spotlight for VS Code. You can access a whole bunch of functionality uh, from here, uh, and it just really makes life uh, super simple for accessing what you need to access. Uh, one of the features that I find works really well, um, if you haven't yet mastered the keyboard shortcuts, um, let's talk about cursors and what you can do. So uh, here are some simple uh, commands for adding extra cursors uh, to where you've got uh, your text selection currently within VS Code. So as an example here, um, I've got a bit of JSON. Uh, let's just say I wanted to add some additional cursors uh, below. So what I can do is I can uh, open the command palette, I can type in, type in cursor and I can add a, a second cursor below. And as you can see, I've got two cursors there that move in sync with each other. You can also do this via a command shortcut and just add more and they will travel with you um, as you need. Uh, a great, one other great feature is selecting a bunch of text. Let's say I just wanted to add a cursor to the, to the end of every line of here. That's another one below. So we can add the cursor to the line ends. Um, just makes it super simple to select a bunch of text, throw in some cursors and make those changes. Next, we've got the ability to transform text. Now, where would you be using that? Well, commonly you'd be using that within um, variable names uh, within your code snippet. So let's just say I wanted to rename app name. So I can double click it. That will just change this instance. I can right click and go change all occurrences or hit the keyboard shortcut if I want to. But that's gonna now select all of them. I can bring up the command palette again and then I can type in transform and we can change how we wanna tr uh, transform this variable. So in this case, I'm just gonna make it uppercase. There we go, all of them throughout the code uh, are changed to uppercase. You can also do this by searching for the text and replacing the text, but I find this is a really quick way to go ahead and transform text uh, within the script uh, that you've got. Another handy one, being able to sort a selection. So in this case, we've just got a markdown list um, of a bunch of uh, VS Code extensions. Uh, so we can select that list. We can use the command palette again, sort lines ascending, and then we've got a beautifully formatted and sorted list uh, within our bit of markdown. Next up, let's chat about workspaces. So it's, it's handy to think about a workspace as 
either just a single folder or a collection of folders uh, within, and in this case, it would relate to something like a GitHub repo that you're working in or a collection of repos if they're all defined together. Um, it can store and restore UI state. You can have recommended extensions. You can have custom settings um, and you can save all of that within um, a JSON file as a .code workspace file and save a whole workspace together. So what this looks like in practice is you can have this, it doesn't actually need to sit within your folder, this uh, code workspace. If you use a absolute path, you can put this code workspace uh, file wherever you want on your system, or you can have it sitting within the folder, within the repo itself. And you can define either a single folder or multiple folders in this case. And it, in this case, it would open up multiple folders um, in your browser for here. And you can also have custom settings that override your settings for VS Code as a whole. Uh, in this case, we've just got some settings in here. Don't really relate to this particular workspace, but in this case, we can see that we've got, we're setting it to format the text on every time it saves. We're setting the default formatter. In this case, let's say that we're working on Terraform code and we're setting the tab size here. And it's also applying just to these specific files. We can throw these bits of text further up outside of this section here and then it would apply to all files within this code workspace. Along with the default settings, we also have the ability to have an extensions uh, file that would recommend other extensions to have whenever you launch this code workspace. So an easy way to think about this was, I've got a workspace, it is a code repo, it's a GitHub repo, and I'm working on it with a couple uh, colleagues. In this case, when they pull down that repo and they launch that workspace, um, that folder and the repo all together, VS Code is then going to actually suggest to them, hey, you should install the Terraform extension from HashiCorp because uh, we're defining it as a recommended extension because that's the type of files that we're gonna be working with here. Next up, a favorite for really anyone who works with a text editor is Themes. The one that I'm using now um, is currently called Nord, though it is slightly customized from the default. Uh, it's really nice, it's nice subtle theme. And as with anything, we can get to it by, to installing it by, we can use the command palette and we can actually just start typing an extension um, and we can go up here to install extensions and then we can search for Nord. Um, same thing, it shows up just like any other extension the themes do and then what you can do is once you've installed it, then you can select it along with any of the other themes that are currently installed. Now with VS Code, just like any other kind of one of these text editors, you can kind of go crazy with it. So in the case of when I said I've gone ahead and customized it, I've gone right down into using semantic tokens to actually change the way that the theme colors specific bits within code files. So I've gone kind of off the deep end in that regard. Another great theme, uh, the one that I actually used to use before this, uh, One Dark Pro, it was kind of created out of Atom's One Dark uh, uh, theme that came baked into that. Um, so this is also a really nice one. It's very colorful. But as I said, there are so many out there that you can choose from, but it all makes life fun to be able to customize your themes and have different colors here or there. Another great feature that we've got within VS Code is the ability to define how we want to save files. So in this case, two settings which I always toggle on, or I've got set in my instance, for example, is formatting on save, and also autosave. Now the way that I've configured it is set autosave to be on focus change. So that means whenever I switch away either, if I switch away from the particular file that I'm working on to another tab or just out of the app itself, it's going to save that file. And on top of that, we're also going to use whatever the default formatter is for that piece of code. 
for that file itself and it's going to format it. And how does that look in practice? Well, let's just take this JSON file right here. And if I drag in a bit of code, Now we can see it's colorized it, but it's all in one line. So we've added that in. And if we now go ahead and save this file, and it's gonna format it nicely uh, just to make it a bit more readable for us. Now you can actually set this on a per language basis. Uh, any of the settings within VS Code uh, can either be done mostly within uh, the GUI, within the app itself, or you can actually get down into uh, the JSON file, which defines uh, a bunch of additional settings. And you can do this based on a per language setting. So I can see here for all of my Terraform files, I set the default tab size to two, to two spaces, format unsaved to true, and the default formatter. And as I said, you can define additional uh, file types here. So if an extension that you install doesn't recognize a particular file as a Terraform file, but you know that it is, you can define the file extension for it. And then uh, these settings will apply. Another great feature is the ability to, uh, if you're working across multiple systems, or you have VMs that you're working in, and you want all of your settings to persist between different instances, uh, VS Code now has um, a setting sync baked directly into the client. It, the case used to be that you would have to get an extension and use an, uh, you know, a totally different extension uh, to do this, but now they've baked it into the core. So it's really quite simple. Once you've gone ahead and set it up and it uses your uh, GitHub account for that configuration, um, and it stores it as a private GIST with all of your settings in there, you can then uh, select to have a bunch of different settings all uh, synced through your account. So in my case, I have all of these things uh, synced across. So all my settings, keyboard shortcuts, snippets, tasks, extensions, and even the UI state. So that means that then if I go and launch VS Code on another system and I log in with my GitHub account, all of my settings, all of my customizations, the theme, it's all gonna come straight back down into the system. What else uh, we've got that, you know, we're constantly working with uh, GitHub repos. And in this case, there is just baked in Git support into the client itself. Um, anytime you edit a file and it is part of a Git repo, you're going to see the source control, the ability to see which files have been modified, uh, how you want to organize those files. And once you've created a commit, you can then sync those files back up. Now this will work both with, if you're working with uh, Git, uh, GitHub Enterprise on-prem, whether you're working with GitHub in the cloud, it just uh, natively respects the way that this particular repo that you're working in, how that uh, is synced and goes back to your source control. If you were to click on one of these files in the sidebar as something that you've seen that you've modified, what's gonna happen is your going to see a diff between uh, what the old state was and what the current state is. It's gonna make things really quite simple to determine. Okay, cool, I know what's changed now. So in this case, we're just seeing when we sorted that uh, list in that markdown file, we're seeing that, okay, these things have all shifted around and it's all essentially the same. But as you've got larger and larger files, you can see this diff across multiple files of the things that have been edited. And when you're a visual person like I am, I like being able to see it like this. Uh, it makes life a whole lot easier um, for me in particular. Uh, and, and finally, what I wanted to highlight were just some really nice additional extensions uh, that I use. Um, I've got a bunch more in the repo itself. Uh, We've got this Markdown all-in-one. It adds extended support for Markdown files within the code, uh, within the code editor. And what that will enable you to do is, you know, when you start typing a list and you hit enter, it's going to add that additional hyphen so that you can continue the list. It will auto-complete checkboxes for you. 
all of that formatting, you can hit Command B and it will bold some text that you've got selected. Uh, the binary P lists uh, extension, when you launch a P list file and you open it in VS Code, if it's a binary P list file, what it, uh, this extension will do will prompt you, do you want to convert it on the fly? In which case it will convert it and then open it and you can edit it and view it. The GitHub Code Spaces extension, that allows you to launch a code space, which is kind of a, a development environment in the cloud within VS Code on your local computer. Very cool, too much to get into in this talk. Uh, we can even view pull requests and issues. We've got a live server, which enables you to launch an HTTP server from uh, your editor so that you can do live web development on the fly. Uh, slides, which is what I'm using to create this minimal environment for uh, the presentation. And also a personal favorite is edit CSV, which allows me to open a CSV file, view it as a table of data, like I would if I was to open the file in Numbers or Excel, edit it and then save it all without having to export it again. It makes my life so much simpler as much as I uh, wish I didn't have to work with CSVs as much as I do. It just makes viewing them and editing them when you're making those minor tweaks a whole lot easier. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, this very quick talk around VS Code. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach uh, out to me. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.